You've just taken part in a successful strike action. You've had the pay rise of a lifetime. Now you need a way to piss away all that extra cash, while also setting the stage for a lifetime reliance on Prozac. Well, look no further than this. A Range Rover L322. <sighs> now, next time you're in a town or city, just have a ride round some of the residential areas. The first thing you'll notice is that the streets are lined with these Range Rovers. But they're all sat right down on the airbags. They're covered in moss and mould and tree sap. Been sat there a long time. And many of them are absolutely plastered in those posters that uh, they stick on your windscreen when your car isn't taxed, warning you of the consequences. Because who's going to pay 630 quid a year to tax a car they can't even use? People who live there, you know, the normal working man. Used to buy uh, a Ford Mondeo or something. But then they realised that for the same price, they could buy a luxury Range Rover, a dream car. If only they knew what was to come. Very strange. I parked this up last night and the suspension was right up in the air like a normal four-wheel drive. But now it's absolutely slammed. It looks like it's been through the pay and spray on GTA San Andreas and had the lowrider modification. So let's see what the problem is. Well, let's fire her up. Right, it's... Uh, there we go. Right, well, in theory the car should raise up in the air now. What have we got? Oh, terrain response, special programs off. What's all this about? Suspension fault. Nothing's happening. Well, let's set off and see what happens. It's fucking that's bouncy. Jesus Christ. Oh, God, there's something not right here. Fucking hell! I don't know, maybe if we get it warmed up a bit, take it down the road, it'll, it'll sort itself out, but... Well, I just don't know, really. Maybe we should try, try pressing it up. <coughs> oh, fucking hell! I know there's a suspension fault! I'll tell you what, even with the suspension like this, it's more comfortable than the Defender. Fuck me! Fuck off! Jesus Christ! I mean, people buy these cars because they think they look smart, they think they look flash, but I tell you what, this is definitely not a flash look. Imagine this after a crate of bodies. Fucking hell! There's three stages I've gone through here. There's the annoyance of when it first happened. Then there's the coming to terms with it. And now I've completely accepted it, and you know, this is probably one of the most uh, fun journeys I've had in my life. Look at it go! Fucking hell! Right, this is where things are going to get serious now. We've got speed bumps. Oh, fuck. Oh, fucking hell. Oh! Oh, the air's gone out of the back now as well. Fucking hell. Oh! Well, here's the first problem, look. Because the car sat on its arse, I can't actually get the jack underneath. It's alright though, because if we start the car, it should go up just enough to manage to get the jack underneath. Oh, 
what's going on here? on with this for fucking ages now and these bolts are completely seized in the job's fucked before it's even started it's just a piece of shit well what's happened now is I've had to take it somewhere to use oxyacetylene we've had to use that much heat the CV boots now split so we'll have to wait another week for that to come Well, that's it. I've managed to make it four miles and the front suspension's completely collapsed. So as you've just seen, after I put that new strut on, the suspension still wouldn't work. So I put a new strut on the other side. I put a new compressor on. Hundreds of pounds ploughed into this already. And it turned out, after all that, the new strut that I put on this side was actually faulty. It had a fucking hole in it. But that's all in the past now. There's nothing I can do about it. At least now I can drive the car and relax. Yeah, I know the CV boots and the front are split, but quite frankly, I don't care anymore. I just don't care. I'm just going to drive it. Whatever happens, happens. At least that's what I would say if the MOT wasn't due tomorrow. So here we go again. It's all right though. Because I borrowed this nice little tool, which means I can just stretch the boot over the front of the drive shaft without having to take everything apart. It's been a nice little job. What could possibly go wrong? Oh! Well that's it, the drive shaft won't even come out of the hub, so... Now if there's any smart asses out there who say, Ah, oh, why don't you use the puller, mate? Well, it doesn't fit. Well, all may not be lost after all. In a fit of rage I sprayed everything with a WD-40 derivative. Come back after an hour and a half, got the air chiselling, and the drive shaft popped straight out. Got the old boot off, so just give my hands a quick wash off, we'll grease it up, put it all back together. Well, as it turns out, the new CV boot, it's not even a stretch boot, it's solid plastic. So that means to do it properly, I'd have to take the whole shaft out. I can't use a stretchy tool. Well, that can fuck right. At this point, I'm probably going to stop documenting the trials and tribulations of this Range Rover because I'll end up filming my own. Now I've got this rare opportunity to drive this vehicle <laughs> without any fault, 
It's actually the best car I've ever driven. I mean, it's it's so smooth and comfy. It's, it's quiet. And when you put your foot down, it really does shift. A lot of cold, wet winter's day like this. The comfort of this car is really quite dangerous. I mean, I've got a heated steering wheel, heated seats all around. The heaters are red hot. Once you're sat in here, you're not moving. I mean, it's even got a digital TV, which surprisingly works very well. It's completely useless to me, of course, since they uh, banned Russia today. And it's completely useless to you because you can't get the Tommy Otto's YouTube channel on here. We've got this 4x4 information which is telling me my front suspension is fucked. We've got all these fancy controls for the suspension which I can't use. There's two storage compartments at the front. You press these buttons here which probably will break at some point. Lots of room in there. But this top one is completely useless. That's almost all the space is taken up by this obsolete CD changer and the holster for the Venture Cam which never works. We've got heated rear seats and climate control as standard. Obviously we've got the split tailgate. So you can pull up in a lay-by somewhere, have a seat and eat your jam sandwiches. Now a very good feature of this car, which most vehicles from this era don't have, is an auxiliary input for the stereo system. So what I've done is I've got this cheap Bluetooth device which goes into the cigarette lighter right next to the AUX input so I can listen to all my favourite artists such as ZZ Top, Bosom or Pocket and take advantage of this very good Harman Kardon sound system. All this of course comes with quite the cost. I mean whilst the car itself is quite cheap to buy really. The tax is £630 a year. It's insurance group 46 which I have no idea what that means but it is double any other car I've had previously. Apparently it does 25 miles to the gallon, but I'm actually getting eight. I mean, you may be able to get 25 miles to the gallon on the motorway, but who the fuck is gonna risk taking one of these down the motorway? And it weighs almost three tons. That's almost as much as a Panzer one, probably. But I don't think this would make it to France. Of course, with all the Land Rover videos I do, we're going to get these mentally ill people in the comments section who claim they've had a Range Rover like this for years and they've never had a problem with it. They get 25 miles to the gallon out of it. But what they won't tell you is they use it two weekends in a year to take the caravan down to Blackpool. And despite only using it for two days a year, they have to spend 10 grand a year in the garage just to keep it on their own. But it's a reliable motor though, because they don't do the work themselves, they pay someone else to do it. Every time I go to the garage for an MOT, there's always one or even two of these parked in the yard. And it's always some sick person spending thousands just to keep it on the road. Because they're good motors, really. I mean, you do have to give it to these cars. They are real head turners. I mean, it wasn't going to have a look when they see one of these broke down in the middle of a jeweled carriageway with the hazards flashing away. Now, in the boot itself, we've actually got a bit of a survival kit because let's face it I know that every time I set off in this car there's a good chance I'm going to be stranded when it breaks down so what have we got well first of all I've got a first aid kit for any self-inflicted injuries that might happen when I rage at the fact that it's broken down a pair of high quality walking boots that's essential because you may have to walk a long way Got this sack. Got a sleeping bag for when you need to camp out in the wild on your treacherous journey walking home from wherever you've broken down. What else have we got? A flask full of your favourite hot beverage. This must, of course, be filled up before you set off on every journey. Ah! camping stove obviously that's full of some emergency rations and some fuel for the stove but obviously when you have to camp out on your long journey back uh, and then we've got uh, Poland's finest 
obviously it did used to be the uh, Russian Baltica lager but uh, they don't sell that anymore so you've got to settle for this that's just to keep you warm when, it, when things really get low now you may notice that at some point in this video the Range Rover had some different wheels on um, well what happened there was it snowed quite heavily one night and instead of driving sensibly I decided I'd turn the traction control off plant my foot to the floor when pulling out of a junction and fail to realise that the uh, snow had completely covered the kerb at the other side of the road so now these Amir Khan Muhammad Ali Keefley bypass spec alloys are completely totaled uh, turns out they are actually quite expensive too now one thing that really bugs me about this car is when you set off the doors lock themselves and when you get out it doesn't unlock the other doors so if I need to get anything out of the passenger side or the boot I've got to go all the way around again and press the unlock button on the dashboard it might seem like a minor thing but this becomes very annoying very fast of course most cars you take the key with you when you get out of the car but not in this because let's face it if anyone steals it they're doing me a massive favour now as you can see we've had a spell of cold weather this snow's over a week old it's been below zero ever since it was minus six last night so let's see how the Range Rover copes with a cold start right not to worry I suppose you know it's cold the battery wasn't the best anyway we'll just jump start it and uh, try again Well, the bonnet cable seems to have snapped. It's pretty much just uh, dead weight now. Well, after leaving it for a few days, it turns out I was in luck. All I had to do was remove the piece of plastic trim and tug on the end of the bonnet cable with a pair of pliers. I got the bonnet open, charged the battery and set off to take some old carpets to the tip. Well, I don't know what's going on here. I've stopped at a shop. Uh, now it won't start. Then, when I take the key out of the ignition, the ignition starts to come back on by itself. How could it go? Jesus Christ. Something not right here. Well, after being sat there for hours like a cabbage, hoping that it'd just start, it didn't. So I had to get towed out of the town centre to a more suitable location to leave the car by Mercedes E-Class. I left it there for a few days, just hoping someone would burn it out, but they didn't. And it just won't start. I've had enough. So before we can do anything, we've got to blow the tyres up with this hobby trailer so we can get that out of the way. I'm absolutely sick of the situation. Uh, What can we do? This is cool. Oh, no, no, yeah. What? Hell yeah. Oh, this is because of my fucking way. Is it a salmon or a herring? 
if we're getting based. Looks like your ex. Go <laughs> on. Fucking hell. Take the door. Just need to push it enough so it uh, we can pull it out and take the road out. Mexico, they probably have 10 people to fucking wind that for me. Yeah. <laughs> vamos, vamos! It's that heavy, it's actually unbent that ramp. <laughs> right, dare we put it back in park now? No. So basically, if you buy a Range Rover, you've also got to have your own recovery operation on standby at all times. It's actually cheaper to buy your own trailer and another motor than actually get roadside cover on one of these. Well, we made it back eventually, but well, the problems didn't stop there. Obviously, we had to push the Range Rover off the trailer into the garage by hand, but we parked the trailer too close to the garage, so the top of the Range Rover actually hit the top of the garage. Uh, we smashed the uh, brake light, and the beam itself has become dislodged. And as if that wasn't enough, as we pulled the trailer forwards, the Range Rover then set off again. Despite the fact we placed some uh, wheel chocks in the garage, it just went straight over them and went bang straight into the vice and we smashed this backlight as well. Let's see what the diagnostics computer has to say. Ignition on. Yep. Come on. Oh, communication with vehicle failed, of course it has. Try again, try something else. Vehicle not responding, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Well, that's it. I can't take it anymore. I've had enough. Thousands of pounds down the drain. Hours and hours of time. Don't buy a Range Rover. Well, after all that, it turns out all that was wrong with it is a bad earth. Which I can't find, I can't find the earth cable anywhere. So all I've done is got an old jump lead, but it one into the starter motor and the other into the battery. Fuck it. Well that's it. The Range Rover has bankrupt me. My coat is held together with tape and I've been sectioned twice whilst owning the Range Rover. But luckily I found someone to buy it, taken a massive loss, but it's gone. Funnily enough, I did not send him away with the uh, Tommy Auto's gold warranty. What I did do though is send in this 
sympathy card. Scabs on my lips and I'll get him. They get out of place. Don't just be nine pound barrels of me. Not your chops, you'll need a bone. Nine half beats, not the flop. Not shit a crap simply. Dance beat for me. Hey, oh, grab that chop. Marking some 